Je suis ravie de vous voir aujourd'hui. Hi everyone and welcome to the Unitarian Church of Montreal and we are just doing a quick tech check before our service starts and they're all bouncing and happy and thumbs up. So we are ready to roll. Welcome to everybody who's on Zoom. Uh, we're grateful that you're here as well. And so uh, without any further ado, I would like to hand it over to Sandra Hunt, our music director, to uh, tell us about today's music. Bonjour à tous et à tous. Good morning, everybody. Today, as every December, we take this Sunday, the Sunday just before Christmas Eve, to celebrate as a community of all ages together. Um, there's lots of treats in store. Nous avons aujourd'hui une invitée vraiment spéciale, uh, Anaïs Ndai, est une violoncelliste de 9 ans. Uh, Elle étudie et se produit avec l'ensemble de violoncelles de Montréal depuis février 2020. Et lorsque vous allumerez les bougies, nous jouerons un magnifique un morceau de le compositeur, euh, le grand compositeur euh, euh, Franck Schubert. La le, le pièce euh, s'appelle Andantino. Et um, les, les dates de Schubert sont, sont uh, 1797, il est mort uh, 1828. Pour le prélude, Anis et moi exprimerons la pr première nuit de Hanouka avec une chanson célèbre, Moaz Tzor. J'espère qu'il n'y a pas de gens qui parlent hébreu. Uh, ou la forteresse du rocher. Le texte remonte au troisième, treizième, treizième siècle. Il résume les défis historiques auxquels les, le peuple juif a, a été confronté. Il est souvent chanté dans les synagogues à l'occasion de Hanukkah. And to start the service, I'm going to play the gathering music. Um, I'll play another movement, Al Niham, from the Three Marias, the piano suite by uh, Heitor Vela Lobos from 1959. You, remember, you may remember from last week's music that a Brazilian folktale, The Three Marias of the Earth, inspired him to compose three portraits of these little girls who were always gay and the best of friends smilingly traveling all the paths of life together. The tale has it that destiny has preserved their trinity as eternal stars in the heavens so that they might serve as a perpetual symbol of the union of humanity to illuminate the path for other children. So Villa Lobos named his three portraits after each of the stars Anitak, Aniham, and Mintaka, which make up the belt of Orion. Aniham is some 2,000 light years away from us, and it has 300,000 to 800,000 times more um, power than our own sun. Today, you will hear the luminescent brilliance of the stars in the darkest week of the year in this piece, Aniham. Thank you. 
Bonjour et bienvenue. Bonjour et bienvenue encore à l'Église Unitarienne de Montréal. Good morning and welcome. My name is Reverend Diane Rollert and my pronouns are she, her and elle. And it is my honor to serve as the minister here. My name is Catherine Childs. My pronouns are they and them. And I am so honored to serve as your director of religious explorations. Ce matin, nous sommes très heureuses de vous accueillir à notre célébration annuelle pour les fêtes d'hiver. Pour toutes les générations dans notre communauté unitarienne et universaliste. Here at the Unitarian Church of Montreal, the third Sunday in December is our annual All Ages, All Chaos, All Fun, All Ages holiday service. And we're so excited that you've decided to join us today, despite the fact that the World Cup final has just started, and a lot of people might be watching that and coming to join us later on. So we're glad you're here with us, whether you're online or in person, we come together to hold each other in one community. Here in the sanctuary, we acknowledge our presence on the unceded territory of the Ganyankahaga people, members of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. We call these lands unceded because they were colonized without treaty or agreement. We begin our service with this reminder that non-Indigenous institutions, including Unitarian Universalist churches, have had and continue to play a role in the racism and colonialism that undermines Indigenous lives and communities. Unitarian Universalism calls us not to shy away from these truths, but to use our energy, resources, and privilege to build a beloved community, which supports the efforts of Indigenous people to build and rebuild strong communities for the future. The people in our community celebrate many different winter holiday traditions. Christmas, Hanukkah, solstice, the new year, and more. Unitarian Universalism honors a living tradition which seeks the sacred in our many spiritual paths. The fourth source of this living tradition calls us to reflect on Jewish teachings and in this time of rising anti-Semitism here in North America and around the world, we thought it was important for us as a community to celebrate the unique message, story and meaning that the Jewish tradition and our many beloved Jewish members and friends bring to our faith and to our community. Today, our multi-generational holiday worship service will honor the traditions of Hanukkah with some solstice and Christmas thrown in as well. To cap it all off, everyone is invited to join us for the return of our annual holiday luncheon. Please join us over in Phoenix Hall after the worship service for coffee, conversation, and latkes. Thank you to everybody who has RSVP'd to help us get an idea of our numbers, but have no fear, nobody will be turned away. However, our kitchen coordinator would love for you to put up your hand right now if you didn't RSVP so she knows how many people to expect. No judgment, no fear, we just want a head count. All Thank right. you. And we, and we want to remind you, uh, don't forget to join us this Wednesday for our solstice service at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. It will be very different and very quiet and beautiful. And um, we also have our beautiful candlelight service on Christmas Eve, which technically starts at 5.30 p.m., but we invite you to start caroling at 5 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Uh, it's always good to get her early for that service. And just a reminder that Christmas Day and New Year's Day, falling both on a Sunday, uh, these will be online services only. We want to give our tech crew a break and our staff a break, so uh, you'll be joining us online for Christmas Day and New Year's Day if you'd like to join us at 10.30. Uh, so uh, don't be surprised if you come on Christmas Day or New Year's Day and no one's here. So, But there is a Christmas dinner, which you can also RSVP to come for on Christmas Day in the afternoon. So this evening, Jews around the world, including my family and I, will light the first candle in the Hanukkah menorah. And for the next eight nights, we will light candles commemorating something that happened thousands of years ago when the Jewish people overcame an oppressive king who had outlawed their religion. During this service today, you'll hear stories and songs about the Maccabees, rebels who fought for their religious freedom 
from the Assyrian king during that time. And after a final battle, when the Jews returned to the temple, their house of worship, they discovered that it had been nearly destroyed. So they restored the temple, but when they went to light the temple's beautiful oil lamp called the menorah, they found there was only enough oil for the lamp, to light the lamp for one night. So they had to send a messenger a long, long way away to get more oil. And as the story was told in later years, the oil burned not just for one night, but for eight nights, long enough for the people to celebrate and rededicate the temple. It was a miracle. At Hanukkah, we remember that long ago victory for religious freedom. We celebrate with songs, sometimes with gifts and always with festive meals. We cook with a lot of oil like frying potato pancakes called latkes to remember, to remember the oil that lasted those eight days. And the smell of latkes lasts in your house for another eight days. And we light the menorah and thanks for the blessing of that miracle so long ago. And I just wanna add just a little reminder here that like all religious traditions or most religious traditions, Judaism is not a monolith. And there are many interpretations of the Hanukkah story. There is a wide range of Jewish thought from ultra-Orthodox to very progressive. And I would say that Jewish progressives have very much in common with us as Unitarian Universalists, as we share a desire to heal this wounded world. So I'm gonna go over here to the menorah and I'm going to light it and sing the blessing. And I invite all of you who practice this tradition to sing along with me for this first night of Hanukkah. Morugata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kiddishanu V'mitzvata V'tzivanu L'achat Likne Shel Hanu Amen. One of my favorite things about Unitarian Universalism is that we get to acknowledge the ways that spiritual themes present in one tradition can echo into another. We celebrate these echoes not to flatten them and make them all the same, but to draw out from each what is unique and special. This morning, in addition to lighting the menorah, we will also light our chalice, the symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith, and the candles in our Advent wreath. I'd like to invite Percy to come up and light our chalice as Reverend Diane reads our chalice lighting words. We light our chalice this morning to celebrate the gift of being alive and the freedom to worship together. Today is also the fourth Sunday in Advent, the time of waiting and expectation leading up to Christmas. Even for those who don't celebrate Christmas as a religious holiday, the Advent season calls us to honor the time of waiting for Christmas, for Hanukkah, for winter solstice and the return of the sun, or maybe just waiting to make it through December. Each Sunday in Advent, we light one more candle in our Advent wreath. The first candle we light for hope that there may be reason, wisdom and kindness in our world. The second candle we light for faith, for allowing ourselves to be open to the mystery and the unknown, trusting that any step forward, be it small or be it bold, can make a difference. The third candle we light for love. Let love deepen our connections and bring us together in community. And the fourth and last candle we light for joy that all of us everywhere may experience ease 
rest and delight this season and always. And we now invite Sandra and Aeneas to play our musical prelude. Our opening words today are the poem, Hanukkah by Reverend Lynn Unger. Hanukkah, come down from the hills, declare the fighting done, be bold, declare victory. Even when the temple is wrecked and the tyrants have not retreated, only coiled back like a snake, prepared to strike again. Come down, try to remember a life gentled by daily acts of domestic faith. The pot set to boil, the bed made up, the table set in calm expectation that when the sun sets, we will still be here. Come down and settle. Light fires that can be seen for miles that dance and spark and warm the frozen marrow. Set lamps in the window. Declare your presence, your loyalties, the truth for which you do not expect to have to die. It would take a miracle, you say, 
to carve such a solid life out of the shell of fear. I say you are the stuff from which such miracles are made. Bonjour, my name is Eleuthera de Conca Lippert, and I'm honored to serve here as the song leader and choir director. My pronouns are she, her. I wanted to tell you a little bit about this first song that we're going to sing, Ocho Candelicas, before we begin. It is a song in Ladino, or Judeo-Spanish, and this is a, a language very close to my heart. Um, it's a Romance language derived from Old Spanish. It was originally spoken in Spain. And after the Edict of Expulsion, um, as Spanish Jews fled to the Ottoman Empire and throughout Europe, the language spread with them. And so it's a language that's written in the Roman alphabet, in Cyrillic, in Hebrew text. Um, and today it's an endangered language. Um, it's enjoying a, a small revival through music. And so I'd like to think that we are part of keeping it alive in singing it every year. This is a a favorite tradition of mine. Um, so I'm going to run through the lyrics that are in your, your booklet. So, Hanuka linda sta aquí. Hanuka linda sta aquí. So you see it's very similar to Spanish. Está aquí. A beautiful Hanukkah is here. Ocho candelas para mí. Ocho candelas para mí. Eight candles for me. And many people make the mistake of doing ochos. Don't do it, don't do it. It's eight, <laughs> ocho. <laughs> you don't pluralize. Okay, um, great. So that's repeated twice. And then um, and then we go to the chorus. So I'm just gonna teach you how to how to count in, uh, in Ladino. So it's una, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, Ocho. Ocho. Muy bien. Okay, second verse. Muchas fiestas vos fazer. Muchas fiestas vos fazer. Oui, on va faire la fête plusieurs fois. Vos fazer. Um, con alegrías y placer. Con alegrías y placer. Yes, with much joy and pleasure. Los pastelicos vos comer. And pastel is like a, a dessert. Pastelico is the diminutive. So little cakes, we're going to eat little desserts. <laughs> Con almendricas y la miel. Yeah, again, so almendra and almond with almonds and honey and almendricas, the diminutive. So little almonds and honey. And then again, uh, we'll count, we'll count it out. <laughs> so if this is overwhelming to you, if foreign languages are not your thing, then just count with us on the chorus, just like una. <laughs> you know, um, get into that vibe. And um, if you're up for it, then, then let's try this. It's a really fun song. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit. <laughs> Yes. 
una candelica, dos candelicas, tres candelicas, cuatro candelicas, cinco candelicas, seis candelicas, siete candelicas, ocho candelas, ocho candelas, ocho candelas para So one of the traditional parts of a holiday multigen is the pageant. Some years we have asked you all to help us out acting out the story of the birth of Jesus. But this year we are thrilled to welcome the Story Guild, our youth group for grades six through nine and their youth advisor, Kate Clark, to help us tell the story of the Latka who couldn't stop screaming by Lemony Snicket. And with that, and by the time I get over to the other side of the stage, let our story begin. This story ends in someone's mouth, but it begins in a tiny village, more or less covered in snow. The snow had fallen during the long night, during which children had pressed their faces to the windows, looking for the glimpse of a man who they suspected of bringing them wonderful gifts. But instead, they heard a terrible noise from a certain nearby cottage a terrible noise that sounded suspiciously like something being born. <laughs> the thing that was being born was a latka. A word here which means potato kip pancake. Latkas are a traditional part of the celebration of Hanukkah, a holiday commemorating a miraculous Jewish military victory. Nearly everything in this world is born screaming, and the latka was no exception. Even though the latka wasn't conceived or born in the way that any of us were conceived or born, but instead was fashioned from grated potatoes, chopped onion, beaten eggs, and a dash or two of salt. Once the ingredients were properly mixed, the latka was slapped into a pan full of oil, heated to a very high temperature, and this is when it began to scream. <laughs> Latka was suffering so much that he leapt out of the pan and out of the window of the cottage and began to run screaming down the boulevard. <laughs> now, this may seem like unusual behavior for a potato pancake, but this is a holiday story in which things tend to happen that would never occur in real life. The Latka ran down the road and ran past a row of flashing colored lights. <laughs> which were hanging from the rain gutters of a nearby cottage. The lights waited for their microphone and their music stand. It's fine, we're waiting. Don't need to worry about it. Fantastic. The lights said, What is all this ruckus? The lights continued, Your noise is distracting from our cheerful glow. The latka replied, I was just thrown to a pan of boiling oil. Can you believe it? The lights could believe it based on all the screaming, but they didn't know why. The latka replied, Because I'm a latka. The olive oil reminds us of the oil used to rededicate the temple of Antiochus at the hands of the Maccabees. The oil was only supposed to last for one night, but there was a miracle and it lasted for eight. 
Plus, frying makes my skin crispy and brown. The lights thought for a moment and said, So you're basically hash browns. And they thought that maybe the latke would go well with a Christmas ham. I'm not hash browns. I'm something completely different. <laughs> The latke rounded the corner. <laughs> no, difficulties please hold the latka rounded the corner and found himself face to face with a bunch of candy canes the candy canes wrinkled their red and white noses at the latka in distaste the candy cane said what is that mouth watering smell the candy canes continued your smell is distracting from our peppermint the latka replied, My mouth-watering smell is part of the cozy feeling of Hanukkah. It reminds us that things are better now than they were in 175 BCE, when the people were not allowed to practice their religion. In order to study the Torah, they had to hide out in caves. And when they heard the Greek soldiers approach, they pretended they were gambling with a small spinning top called a dreidel. The candy canes thought for a moment, and commented that it was sort of like Mary and Joseph hiding out in the manger and suggested that someone should write a carol about the latka. I'm not part of Christmas. Hanukkah is a totally different thing. <laughs> the screams of the latka grew quieter and quieter as the pancake ran out of the village into the surrounding forest. Not yet, it's okay. Its utter fury was unabated, a phrase here which means the latka was still very annoyed at the objects to which it had spoken. But it was also quite tired, so it decided to rest for a few minutes beneath the branches of a little pine tree. And that is where we will rejoin the story of the latka a little later in the service. Thank you, Story Guild. Up next, we've got a really wonderful song by Peter, Paul, and Mary called Light One Candle. And if you don't know it, you'll pick it up pretty quick. We got three verses and the chorus is really catchy. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit. Shine through our love. 
the memory that's valued so highly we keep it alive in that flame what's the commitment to those who have died when we cry out they've not died in vain have we come this far always believing that justice would somehow So let us give the poor Latka time to rest as we enter into a time of quiet reflection. We begin with spoken word followed by silence. And as Aeneas, our young guest cellist and Sandra lift us out of the silence, I invite all who wish to come forward to light a candle for any joy or sorrow you may have upon your heart today. If you're in the sanctuary, you may wish to write a hard with your thoughts, you may also choose to include your name. If you're online, you're invited to write your joys and sorrows into the chat when the music begins after the period of silence. If there are joys or sorrows you prefer to keep private, you can message me directly on the chat online, beginning with the word private. If you're in the sanctuary, you may write a card and place it here in this box marked private. And please include your contact info if you'd like me to follow up with you. We are grateful for this time we share as a whole community. And these beautiful poinsettias are given by Carol Cummings Spears in memory of Betsy and Frank Simons, Jean, Stan, and Peter Cumming, as well as the late Val Bourdon, who began this tradition of giving poinsettias to the church for the holiday season in memory of his wife, Rita. These lovely plants will remain here through Christmas Eve. May we hold in our hearts all who are finding these days especially challenging, who are in the hospital or homesick, caring for loved ones, waiting to receive news about a diagnosis, grieving a loss or feeling sadness with the shortening days. Today we hold in our hearts especially Stephanie Lilly, who has returned home from the hospital after having had double pneumonia as a result of COVID. She's doing well now. And we rejoice, we absolutely rejoice today with Amber Dawn Belmare, who gave birth on Wednesday, December 14th at 2.58 a.m. to baby Maz. Mazi, Amber, and Dad Johnny are all happy and well. Will you please join me in the spirit of meditation and prayer? Spirit of life, ground of our being, you call us together to find our way toward healing. Dare we dream to heal the world. Tikkun olam, the Jews say in Hebrew, tikkun olam, to repair the world through acts of kindness, through love for this earth, through an active dedication to peace, to tolerance, to acceptance, and to justice, to heal what has been harmed in this world. Tikkun olam, an ancient prayer that still calls to us today. Repair the world. Use our minds, our hearts, and our hands to heal the wounds of others to heal our own wounds, to unite what has been broken apart, to welcome the stranger, to replace cynicism and apathy with love and hope. Tikkun olam, repair the world, find healing in the lights of this season, take up the flame, light the way toward freedom, toward justice, toward the healing we need in our bodies, in our hearts, in our souls. Tikkun olam, repair the world, all of us, from whatever religion we claim as our, as our own, from whatever religion we may claim as our past, 
whether we have faith or no faith, may we hear the call, tikkun olam. Let us find ways to repair the world together. Amen.
What a blessing to have you here with us today, Anais. Merci beaucoup pour la musique, Anais. These are the joys and sorrows of our community today. Happy birthday, Reverend Diane. <laughs> and then it says, so grateful you were born. And then it says, anonymous, don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Do I recognize the handwriting? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Happy birthday, Reverend Diane. <laughs> Thank you. you. Am I bright? Am I bright red? I feel bright red. There is there is one more online joy and sorrow. Thank you all so much. Uh, from Rory, grateful for the laughter from the wonderful screaming Latka performers. Sure. Congratulations, the best of many many churches in Montreal. Joie, merci pour la nature magnifique. Les animaux, les plantes et la neige. Tristesse. Je suis triste pour la famille ukrainienne qui a fui la guerre au Canada et dont leur fille, Maria, est morte frappée pour une voiture alors qu'elle allait à l'école cette semaine. Sorrow for people suffering in war, illness and addiction. Sorrow for all the students in Montreal from Iran, so far from home and watching the depression from afar, the repression, the repression from afar, joy at the snow. My father's birthday today, he was born in December 1899 at the turn of the century. He, his was a life well lived. Joy for the beautiful white snow covering our city. Sorrow for an employee of ours, I learned, will be deported next week, depriving his son of a father. Joy that my parents are still with us. A beautiful drawing here of a menorah and a chalice. Joy to be here celebrating our traditions together. Joy to be here now and for my three children, sorrow for the people of Ukraine. Joy for the perseverance of indigenous women. Late, but I made it here despite the parking spaces occupied by snowbanks. Such a joyous time together. I am moved by the wonderful music, especially the young cellist. I laughed heartily with our young actors. God bless us all, everyone. Joy, vive la latka libre. <laughs> jo concern for all those whose mental and emotional health plummets at this holiday time. As we do each week, I light one last candle for those who cannot be with us and for all the joys and sorrows that we carry in the silence of our hearts. With gratitude for all this time that we share in community. So may it be. And now we'll be singing a beautiful song, There is a Love, by Elizabeth Norton and Rebecca Parker. The lyrics are in your booklet, but they're very easy. Um, so if you'd like to just kind of connect to the, the song and, and um, not look at the words, I invite you to do so if you feel comfortable. The words are, there is a love holding us. There is a love holding all that we love. There is a love holding all. 
we rest in this love. We've sang it for the last two weeks, so we're going to try this around today, but well, <laughs> we'll do a little brush up first. <laughs> um, today's a, a mm-hmm. All right, so it goes, we'll do it line by line. There is a love holding us. There is a love holding us. There is a love holding all that we love there is a love holding all that we love there is a love holding all there is a love holding all we rest in this love we rest in this love let's try it all together a couple times and then we'll bring in the second part all right here we go one two there is a love holding us there is a love holding all that we love there Let's try it as a round. So this will be part one. You'll stick with me. And this part of the room will go with um, with Sandra and, <laughs> and Rev <Rep> Diane. <laughs> so, yeah. You want to start? Yeah. Sure. OK. OK, so then, you... <laughs> so then you'll start. Sure. All right. And, and folks over Zoom, sing whichever part you like. Um, I hope you can hear us in the room singing. And um, yeah, you get the sense of singing yeah. in a round. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <clears throat> there is a love holding us. There is a love holding all that we love. There is a love holding all that we love. There is a love we rest in this love And now Holly will share our invitation to give. We share many gifts here. Our gifts of being present, of celebrating the milestones of our lives and of the seasons. Our gifts of time and supporting each other 
especially through difficult times. And our gifts of money to financially support this congregation and its works in the wider world. Each month we share our gifts with a local organization. Half of the unidentified cash collected in today's offering here in the sanctuary will go directly to Shea Stella. And I, I would like to say that my niece a couple of years back um, was introduced to this organization, my sister found it, and she was in a very dark time and didn't know how to um, transition into a different kind of life. And she, they offered so much support. I am very grateful to them. Um, so the other half, uh, and any gifts you wish to put in the envelope you received, will go to the church to help us support all that we do to stay connected online and in person. You may place your offering in the basket here up front or in the offering basket as you leave the sanctuary. If you are online, we invite you to go to Shea Stella's website to donate. And for all your gifts, we give thanks. Hi, my name is Shoshana Green. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm a member of this congregation. Our community is entirely supported by the generosity of its members and friends. And as part of our commitment to take action in the world, we also share our plate. Each month, we invite you to donate as you're able, either online or through our collection baskets outside the sanctuary, to a local nonprofit whose values and mission align with ours. And this month, half of the loose cash in our collection baskets will be given to Stella, an organization by and for female identified sex workers in Montreal. For more than 25 years, Stella's mission has been to improve the working conditions and quality of life of sex workers and to educate the general public about sex work. They offer legal information and medical and social support. They fight discrimination and promote community and solidarity, both among sex workers and with their allies. They publish newsletters and informational material for sex workers and for the general public, and they work against discrimination and criminalization. To support their work, please go to shaystella.org or place a donation in a basket as you leave the sanctuary. And of course, you can support the Unitarian Church of Montreal on our website, ucmtl.ca, or with a donation in a basket. Thank you. the screaming Latka. He had run out of the small village, which was covered in snow. Exhausted from screaming, the Latka had sat down to rest in a copse of pine trees. Over there, over there. <laughs> Keep going, your microphone's over there. The pine trees were napping, but woke up at the sound of an object plopping down at their feet. The trees asked, Are you a present? Because as far as the pine trees were concerned, presents were the only things allowed to sit beneath their branches at this time of year. The Latka sighed. We're gonna try the Latka's microphone. Do you wanna check your box and see if you're turned on? Cause I don't think we had you through the sound system. And we want the folks on Zoom to be able to hear you. Or maybe the Latka just wants to grab Hello. the cello okay. mic. Oh, oh, there we go. That sounded good. We like that sound. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, okay, because as far as the pine trees were concerned, presents were the only things allowed to sit beneath their branches at this time of year. 
the latka side. <sighs> Presents aren't really a big part of Hanukkah. There's nothing wrong with giving gifts to loved ones, of course, but it's more important to light the candles for eight consecutive nights to commemorate the miracle in the temple and the miracle of victory when you are thoroughly outnumbered, so you shouldn't give up hope. And the pine trees added. Plus, there's always Santa Claus. The latka was too exhausted to scream. Santa Claus has nothing to do with it. Christmas and Hanukkah are completely different things. The pine trees pointed out that different things often blend together. One was even about to launch into a story about pagan rituals. But before the pine tree could begin its story, a family came trooping through the snow, searching the forest carefully. The pine trees are now going to become a family. Please wait. Look, a family is approaching. They're almost ready. Look at them out in the cold. Uh, here we go. Their conversation went something like this. We always wait to the last minute. We always wait to the last minute to get ready for the holiday. We'll never find a good one. One of them pointed toward the pine trees. You shouldn't give up hope. See, it's perfect. It's beautiful. Such a marvelous sight. And its skin looks so crisp. It will be perfect for Hanukkah dinner with a topping of applesauce, sour cream, or even jam. I'll refry it in oil to remind us of the rededication of the temple and the triumph of the Maccabees over Antiochus. After hiding in the caves all that time. They scooped up the latka and smiled down at it, laying so peacefully in their mitten, <laughs> and then stared curiously at their other hand, wondering what they had been thinking, bringing an axe on a latka hunt. <laughs> the family strolled back to the village, walking past all the cottages with flashing colored lights and smiling politely at the candy canes until they reached their own home. Thank you, Latka and family. The family carried the Latka into their home, which was warm and cozy, and sat down at the table, which was lit with the flickering candles of a menorah, or Hanukia, which is a branched candelabra designed specifically for the holiday. It is very frustrating to not be understood in this world. If you say one thing and keep being told you mean something else, it can make you want to scream. But somewhere in the world, there's a place for all of us. Whether you are an electric form of decoration, peppermint scented sweet, a source of timber, or a potato pancake. On a cold, snowy night, everyone and everything should be welcomed somewhere. And the latka was welcomed into a home full of people who understood what a latka is and how it fits into its particular holiday. And then they ate it. Mmm, gulp. The end. Would Miles, Ole, and Rosa, and Kate come up and take a bow, please? And now I have to go to the other microphone again. Now it is time to join in one of the most joyful parts of celebrating Hanukkah. Dancing the Hora. So if you would rise in body or in spirit and come out into the aisle somewhere around where you're sitting, we'll make a big circle in the sanctuary, shoulder to shoulder. Reverend Diane is going to demonstrate the Hora for us. But remember, we want you to participate 
no matter where you are or how your body is moving today. So if you're joining us on Zoom, you are definitely encouraged to hop up and dance in your own space. For those here in the sanctuary or on Zoom who would prefer to remain in your seats, please sing along, clap or create some body rhythms by tapping your heels, clapping on your chest or your thighs, whatever feels right to get into the spirit of the dance. Now I have my son. So I can't stand shoulder to shoulder with you because I have a broken arm that's still not healed. Uh, and I can't hold hands with you. But I'm going to show this to you. And I'm realizing most of you are looking this way. So I'd probably have better demonstrate it this way so you know what to do, except for the people who are over here who are going to be complete. Yeah, if you turn that way, that'll be good, just so you see. So to dance the hara, um, this is how I know it. And maybe you know it differently, but we'll just do it my way. <laughs> So you step to the right, and then you step crossover back, step to the right, crossover front, step to the right, crossover back, step to the right, crossover front. Now, got that? Got it? <laughs> Some people are laughing. That's okay. You can also just do this. Now, the music, <clears throat> I don't know what the timing is going to be. Okay, step right. All right, you ready? Okay, go. And you're gonna turn around and go this way. <laughs> Do I have anybody who's a, I can actually, I will lead, I can lead as long as I have a little distance. All right, here goes. Is that gonna try like a this. good speed for the dance? We're gonna, I'm gonna slow it down slow so right. it's like half time, but you can keep going your time. Yes, I have a okay. professional dancer with me. Yay. Okay. All right. Here we go. And okay. it's just a standard grapevine. I came long ago, long ago from New England. You could never get a New England congregation to dance in the sanctuary like this. You are awesome. Thank you. And I'm actually going to ask you to remain standing because we are going to do the last part of our worship service, which is my favorite UCM tradition. We are going to sing the 12 days of Christmas. 
So I'm going to ask you to clump up with the people who are around you, maybe clump up around some people who've chosen to stay seated, and we're gonna divide you into 12 groups. Each group is going to be one of the days of Christmas. Your group is going to come up with an action for your day of Christmas. If you're not familiar with the 12 days of Christmas, the words are in your lyrics book. So, Eleuthera, could I borrow your microphone for a second? All right. Okay, so day one, partridge in a pear tree. Day two, turtle doves. Day three, what's day three? For three French hens, fantastic. Group at the back, four. Excellent. Day five, golden rings right here. Day six. Day six, it's birds, it's geese, isn't it? geese a -ling. okay, all of you are geese a -ling. Day six, day seven, day eight, day nine. We're gonna have to divide some people. Great, okay. No, you're gonna be, you're day six. You're gonna be day 10. Lords of Leaping, okay. There's a lot of five golden rings, okay. Half of the golden rings are gonna be day 11. And half of this group is gonna be day 12. Okay. So, with your group, come up with your action, and then Eleuthera is going to lead us. Is everybody ready? <laughs> We're going in. <laughs> Here we go. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves and a partridge.
Thank you all. You can retake your seats. On a cold, snowy night, everyone and everything should be welcomed somewhere. Somewhere in the world, there is a place for all of us. There's enough freedom for us to express ourselves. There's enough for us to give and receive. There's enough for us to share. There's always the miracle of light to guide us through the darkest nights. We may extinguish our chalice, but never the light and warmth it brings. Nous éteignons la flamme de notre communauté, mais jamais sa chaleur. Happy, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, Hanukkah happy solstice, solstice, Merry Christmas, and a, and a happy, happy New Year, Year to everyone. everyone. Joyous fête! Joyous fête! Et bonne année à toutes et tous!